Hey everybody, welcome to the Polly Shore podcast. Wait, no, no, fuck. Wait until the Jam in the Van show hosted by myself, Polly Shore. We're going to have comedians and we're going to have some uh, influencer rappers types, right? Well, yes, types, yeah. And then we're also going to have some musicians, so don't go anywhere. Da 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 da. Welcome to the uh, Jam in the Van show, hosted by Polly Shore. Nicole, you want to step in right now and tell them what's up? What's up, everybody? I think, Polly, the show should be named um, PMS. Right. Because that, P- PMS yeah. stands for your initial. Right. Polly Montgomery Store. Yeah. No, it's Polly Montgomery Store. <laughs> so that's the whole thing. You guys heard about that, right, on the social media? Yeah. 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 yeah so Seems tell, great. Yeah, what do you think? I mean. I think it's a great idea. Time to switch shit up. Switch it up, right? So the name, the name's gonna show is gonna be what? Because you the Richard Simmons of comedy, so right. you the son of Missy Shore, right? Who build comedy store. So uh-huh. I give you a new laughing nickname, Polly Store, and this show should be PMS stand for Polly Montgomery Mothership okay, Store. Okay, so we'll talk about that later. So that's gonna be the new show. Okay, it's yeah. coming around. It's gonna hit during the summertime. Okay. So that's the good the summertime, right? Yeah. So yeah, we're going to introduce these guys right here. Can you tell them who they are so the audience knows? Oh, there's uh, Nicole, one of the comedians. Uh, she competed with me for Open for Polly Shore. Yeah, oh, but that's, not what, we're, that's that. not what we're talking about. This is doing something else. So once again, do you know who they are and why they're here or no? No. I know the We sent the you the rapper. fucking notes last night. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> these guys. These guys. No, there was a huge roast on Netflix. I was actually there. I was waving from the audience at you guys. And there was a huge roast on Netflix, and it was called the Tom Brady Roast. And if you guys don't know what a roast is, it's basically when people make fun of people. And it's kind of like, it's not making fun of yourself, it's making fun of people. And you guys wrote jokes making fun of Tom Brady for different comedians. So yeah. s- tell us your name, Pat Barker, and let's go. Come on, tell me. Yeah, uh, Pat Barker. Yeah. Nice to be on the, the PMS program. It's not the PMS yet, dude. It's not yet. <laughs> yeah, that's not yet. Okay. Yeah, I know so- yet. It's not yet. Guy, no, not yet. It's I apologize. I, I, I've ruined everything. I thought it was a soft launch. That's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So tell us. No, that was a big fucking show, you guys. I yeah. want you guys yeah. all here. You guys are the part of the team. Uh, Benji, I saw it on your Instagram. You had there's probably like 20 writers. Bunch of writers. So yeah, uh, myself and Pat and Nicole cool. were some of the writers, but it was a, a pretty big team. And yeah, we had the awesome experience of getting wow. to write on that awesome roast. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So this was the uh, once again. Do you guys just to reiterate because I know people smoke a lot of weed. They watch the show. <laughs> this is the Tom Brady roast mm. writers. Mm-hmm. Just wow. so you're very clear. So there's a roast about Tom Brady, where people made fun of him. You got Nikki Glaser, yeah. you got uh, um, Jeff Ross. So you want to break it down, who wrote for what? I know you might not contractually allow to say what jokes you wrote, but... Yeah, I mean, I mean, generally speaking, I think we did a lot of legwork with the football players. I, oh, think, wow. I think a lot of the comedians understand what's going on, mm-hmm. right? So they come in with like their own stuff they, from their friends. They have a network of people. And then we kind of put the finishing touches on. But like when you're getting like... Rob Gronkowski, you know, we kind of got to start from scratch and get him on the right path yeah. and then try to desperately to keep him on that path. So. And Ron Gronkowski, he's the one that Nikki Glaser made that really funny joke about crypto. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's Ron Krakow- is it Gronkowski. Krakowski. Krakowski. Yeah. So he's got he's also. Hey. So you wrote some of the Ron Krakowski jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you write some of those. Tell us some of the jokes you wrote for him. They're great. I jokes. mean, you could pr- you could probably. I mean, dude, we're talking. Your fucking shit went over to mm-hmm. India, Europe. The one guy even referenced Vladimir Putin in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> this is a worldwide roast. Don't like pat yourself up on the backs, guys. No, I think we're all really proud of it for sure. Yeah, so, for sure. Like the the reception it got, and it fuck. was just people really really liked it, and even on. On X and all the social media platforms, you just see the stuff getting millions and millions of views. But yeah, I couldn't go on the internet without seeing like some of our jokes, and it was it was great. 
Yeah, we've talked about this. We've, we've written on shows where we're like, I think I'm going to try and take that off my IMDb. So it, yeah. was, I, it was nice to write for something that I was proud of, you know. I took in classes how to write ropes. So I did on Q Tony, and I did very well. Mm. Because English is my second language. How would you roast, roast us? Like, what's the first thing that comes to mind as, like, a weakness you would exploit to be funny? The... Uh, roast you right now? Yeah. Yeah, or all, any of us. Like, what would you say about Polly? Mm, Polly, I would date you if you have a longer curly hair. Okay. okay. Take that, you piece of <laughs> shit. Right. Okay, so, so back to you guys. So, once again, <laughs> you're backstage at the world famous forum. Uh-huh. Yeah. You got all the writers are back there. You wrote for Kukowski. Tell me some of the jokes you wrote for Kukowski. The, the ones that were, uh, that like landed. Competent. Yeah. 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 So tell me. I mean, no, I. You know, you can't. You can't really do that. You're not allowed to. Yeah. It's not in good taste. You know, as a writer, you get paid to write the jokes. Whoever said Polly Shore wasn't in good taste <laughs> well, <laughs> doesn't, make, doesn't make sense. It, I just want to hear because a lot of people saw it. That's all. And, and in all, no, I, I appreciate. In it, all but. fairness to the people who tell the jokes, are you their lawyer or something? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In all fairness, <laughs> you can write great jokes for people, and if they don't tell them right, those jokes mm-hmm. are gonna fall on oh, their yeah. ass. Right. So as much as yeah. it's important to write the jokes and help people and this and that it's just as important to be entertaining and tell the jokes well and what you really want to do as a writer is like talk to those people and kind of see what makes them them Mm. and then write jokes that you know that will just sound good coming from them or a perspective that only they can have like Gronk has this character of just being the big dumb guy yeah, the, the dingleberry the party yeah. guy yeah. you know so when you write jokes for him you're gonna want to write stuff that's more like something a frat boy would say to his friends mm-hmm. and so it's it that's the fun of it is writing for different people and finding different voices um, yeah and working with them and then who did and then who did you mostly write with because he was saying he did with the... the well, I, I think I think we all, like, wrote for a lot of people. I mean, I got jokes on for probably, like, seven or eight different acts. And I think the, a lot of the writers were in the same boat where, like, we're tossing one here, we're tossing one there to, like, you know, different yeah. people. Once again, just to reiterate for the people that are smoking weed at home one more time, I just want to kind of connect the tissue. Can you please tell them in Vietnamese who these people are? À, dạ xin chào quý vị đây là những người mà đóng cho tôm Brady đó những cái chương trình mà mà hai người nó gây lộn với nhau nó tùm lum hết trơn á. Yeah, yeah, what she said in Vietnamese unless she didn't have time to do the text. These are the some of the roast writers for the Tom Brady roast mm-hmm. that was on Netflix. I think she just called me a fat ugly whore. I, mean, <laughs> no, I don't appreciate it. <laughs> Maybe she roasted you in Vietnamese. Argumentation. Yeah. Nicole's yeah. like I've heard that same thing at the yeah, nail yeah. salon 30 <laughs> times. <laughs> so so okay, so mostly you did the football players. What about you? Everyone? Like you? Did you see any of your jokes that went live on TV? Yes, oh, yeah. but but generally speaking, as a as a as a room, the writers will get together and think of a lot of jokes, and then they'll all go into a big document, mm. and jokes will get sourced. So let's say I don't know who Nicole. Let's say Nicole was in charge of Drew Bledsoe. I don't think she was. But I was, uh, they had me assigned to Nikki. And right. You prep. Different. Oh, yeah. So you wrote a couple of the Nikki jokes, but you're not allowed to say, right? You're not allowed to say. Well, she actually has said she doesn't mind if people say they wrote for her, but she doesn't like it when they say what specific. God. Okay. So we're just going to say it right now. So Nikki Glazer, who who landed pretty hard over there, her career is going pretty well because of you. No. What the fuck? No, no, no. no, no. What do you mean? No, 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 no. Because of her. Because of her. She's such a pro. Yeah, Yeah. Nikki's a pro. No, she's fucking fantastic. But basically, there's no ego involved. When you're you're looking at a 40-page document trying to find a joke, tell Nikki or some help Mm. Nikki or somebody else, um, you're not like, you're trying to find a joke that you think will help them that they'll like. It's not so much of like, I did this or I wrote this. Yeah, everyone's jokes get dispersed amongst everyone. And then you just get assigned someone the day of to prep. And you're not even really, you're just kind of going through things with them, making sure they're ready. It's not like you're the person who got the most jokes. Yeah, because when I first met you, you were writing mostly for Comedy Central roasts. I was right. I wrote me and uh, we all wrote on the Alec Baldwin roast. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. And then Benji, you, you, I see you with Jeff Ross a lot. So you write right with a lot of his stuff, or uh, I, I help Jeff, but you know he's a pro. He he writes most of his own stuff. And this is, I think, that was like my fourth or fifth roast that I wrote. Yeah, because I saw you also backstage or behind at the store. You were with Tony Hinchcliffe literally the night before, and you guys were fucking I was with assigned, stuff. I was assigned to Tony. So like she said, not often it's the day of, but sometimes days before, depending on the talent, maybe weeks before. You'll you might get assigned. It, 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 this was different. This was Netflix, but in, in past it was 
done a little differently, but generally speaking, a writer will get assigned to talent to sort of help them with their script, make sure they like the jokes, oh, they don't like this one. And then also sometimes it's good to have some accountability on each uh, person's script yeah. because then you know if, um, oh, this joke is, a, a lot of people are doing a joke like that, maybe you don't want to, or, or oh, you know what, so-and-so decided they don't want to tell this joke, Let's put it back in the bank of jokes, yeah. and now maybe someone else will tell it. Yeah, and then I was told that the producers of Jam in the Van emailed you guys about a week ago and said that you guys were going to possibly write some some roast jokes for me, so yeah, you guys yeah, can yeah. start first. for Because I know you said you texted me last night. You're like, yo, dude, I got to do some roast jokes, so here, go first. You can roast me. I, I think you might be thinking of somebody different. <laughs> oh. No one. Yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't I didn't get an email. email. Yeah, no one no. reached that out to us. That would have been cool, though, right? If they you want to just tease you right now? Just no. Do a couple roasts for me. Hit, mm. hit me up. Let me think. I do want to know what gas station you got that ne necklace from. <laughs> this was from a fan from Yuma, Arizona. Jetski gave it to me. Speaking of Jetski, oh, she's, jet selling, she's selling her <laughs> new Jetski glasses. Cool show, Polly. It looks like I'm in a four non blondes music video. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he took mine. <laughs> I was just about to do that same one. No, but for real, when you guys come up with these jokes, you, it's hard to do what Benji just did. Very. Which is like, you got to go home and think about Benji, it. Benji. You smoke weed and shit and be like, fuck, I got to write some jokes. And you sit around your little apartment and you're like, da, 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 da. My favorite thing that, uh, well, I, see, I'm very much like, I, I need a few minutes. Just let me have a few minutes by myself in it's my own head. Deal. I'll write it. A lot of people are really good at like pitching in the room, like just throwing whatever out mm. there. Yeah. Benji, Benji was the guy yeah, who yeah. made the room laugh the hardest. And wow. to me, half of the jokes he knew when he said <laughs> it, he's like, There's no way this will ever I make it on air. The what the what? Like the funniest. Joe Benji's stuff. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 I think it's good to have a room. Because he's a people. bitter Jew, that's why. <laughs> Right. I think it's good if a room is fun. So I will say jokes even if I don't think they're for anybody but making people laugh. I think it's good oh, to have a healthy good. comedic environment. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good. Okay, how and roast for you, Polly? Your voice sounds like Buddha just lost five pounds over his belly. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> so, and then also a lot of people don't know how long it took because I saw you guys around the store for months. Mm -hmm. I mean, this took a long time. It wasn't like you got the gig and all of a sudden two weeks later you're shooting it. I mean, kind of. It was. <laughs> yeah. Really? I only worked for a couple weeks on it. Wow. Like, yeah. Some people got like a month of writing time. I think time, a month think. is like the longest anyone so you guys just it. started writing jokes a month before we'll no for for all of us it was two weeks we were part of the two-week crew there was a there was a little crew that was in there before us which also makes it tough because you come in and some scripts are already done yeah. and you're like oh all right you know you're trying to figure out where you can get these jokes on and a few of them by the time we got there i feel like we're already done or 90 percent mm. of the way done and we just you know help punch them up a little bit but no we came in maybe two two and a half weeks before it happened and you mm. just got to hit the ground running. Who was the one that came out with uh, um, uh, Jeff Ross coming out as O.J. Simpson? That was probably was Jeff's, Jeff's idea. idea. I'm sure Jeff's that was idea. Jeff thing. Yeah. For, my, yeah. for, for my professional experience, I think joke writing is just 20%. The most important is the delivery style, the acting skills, the personality of an act uh, of the comedian. Yeah. 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 Can you sing me one of your songs real quick? She's a great singer. She don't, legally, uh, contractually, she has to sing. So. Another song? Okay. Yeah. Hello, I bring food again For Polly Shaw, he's my friend I bring a lot of food for he falls When barely food, they laugh at all my jokes So I bring in food Anytime I come in here How's my career? Keep them fat and happy. Sometime I bring a pizza pie, corned beef sandwich on some rice, garlic stream with tangy dipping sauce. Polly loves it because he the boss. Bring some Chinese. On Christmas Eve, the bow order, please. I keep them fat and happy. Oh. Wow. Chills. I Literal my chills all over my body right now. That was I'm incredible. a professional so singer. Should, so, so, so there's probably obviously going to be another 
roast? Have they started talking about so. LeBron James? I'm or? sure they're already talking behind the scenes. Yeah. I mean, there's, Who do you think? There's very few names that could live up to this. That's my point. On a That's level like, of like, because it wasn't just that it was Brady. It was that you had all that Everything. weird drama with Belichick and Kraft, and you were yeah. able to create yeah. these moments of them taking shots. Like, you're not going to be able to do that unless you get like Jordan and Pippen and the old Bulls teams. Mm. But um, yeah, if you're just trying to live up to that name, I don't know, Tiger Woods would be crazy. Mm. I would well, love to great. roast Tiger. What about LeBron? Eh. Well, yeah. I've, I yeah. think he would do it in a second. I think he'd want to do it. Diddy. I think we need Diddy. Oof. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Diddy, 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 Diddy. Diddy. Okay. The roast of Diddy, Diddy hosted Diddy. by R. Kelly. Yeah. Cool, cool. And the original roasters was uh, Don Rickles, yeah. right? And all those guys, Soupy Sales, mm. my dad. I was actually on the uh, Did you do Larry Flint. Yeah, I was on the Larry Flint roast. Mm. Really? I did that. I was on the day, or uh, you know, I roasted Larry Flint. What was that experience? This was like? at the Friars Club. Wait, this was, was a long. Was that time, something obviously. you enjoyed? Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. I think I can do it. What was your favorite joke that you? I, I you fuck. Don't I don't remember. <laughs> something about him being in a wheelchair. I'm sure. <laughs> so, he had a golden wheelchair. Yeah, he did have a golden wheelchair. He had a golden microphone, so he had a golden wheelchair. So, uh, well, cool. So, you guys, I'm very proud of you guys. I've known you all for a while. I don't know you as well. I've seen you around the store. But I'm happy for you, and I'm happy that this this roast thing was so big, you know, which was why one of the reasons why I wanted to have you in here so people can see some of the people behind the scenes of what they saw. So you guys were great writers. And thank thank you. you. Thank you. And don't forget that you guys did a really great job. Ever forget that. Thanks All right, so we're going to bring up the uh, – uh, is he an influencer? He's like a rapper. He's an influencer. His name is Gata, and he's uh, he's always with Little Dicky on the show Dave. So, all right, guys. Uh, well, thank you. Give it up for the roasters. Here we go. Now we're gonna bring up Gata. Gata, who's also an actor and a rapper, and uh, I saw him recently at the Hollywood Bowl, uh, rapping with the gentleman. Named Little Dicky, and I saw you also. Yeah, yeah. Very talented, very, very, very talented actor as well, my man. Very talented actor. I saw man. some of your scenes. Appreciate you, bro. You know, I, mean, I just, I'm just working hard for longevity, bro. Just like you, man. Like, I look up to you, bro. You, you've been doing this shit for a long time, bro. So I appreciate the. Uh, praise the flowers or you know compliments from me bro i mean a lot to me bro. thank you thank Cause you because i ain't never really uh think about being an actor i ain't gonna lie yeah no i can tell it comes natural yeah, there's no I, it's not like you went to class yeah my real no you kept it real i yeah. could say that you started crying in the fucking scene yeah for real. you should no, be no, nominated no, uh, for an emmy tears. you know the what? menthol tears you know the menthol tears that they give you yeah on set i ain't use none of that bro i, I know saying, i can I tell saying, yeah that's all that's my real story too really bipolar Really able to... Is that your purse right there? Oh, it's my little yeah, lunchbox. box. let's put it on the floor because I don't want to get in the way with yeah, what's happening. It's my lunchbox. All right. I got my uh, cannabis and stuff in there. Cool. Yeah, so, okay. I so, like to lean back. So, yeah. So, yeah. just chill. So, first of all, thank you so much for being here. No doubt, Be man. here. And this is uh, Pat, Benji, Nicole. They are, what's up, uh, man? They're a very funny comedian and friends of mine, and they uh, they were part of the roast battle of the roast of the Tom Brady show. Yeah, that was amazing. That show was funny as hell, y'all. I definitely oh, watched I appreciate it. Appreciate that, man. Thank and you. And I yeah. really appreciate y'all writing, you know, and y'all doing what y'all do, man. The dude in the corner, bro, he wrote all the, uh, the, the, the Kevin Hart jokes. Oh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> this that's, guy in the corner. So there you go. See? That's dope, man. That's tight. And then she wrote all of uh, Pat Buchanan's jokes, <laughs> and then he wrote all of... The roast of the uh, 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 who was it? The um, the one guy, you know, fuck Ep one, Epstein. Fuck. Back to Gaga. I saw you uh, perform with uh, Tiger. Oh yep, uh, yep. It's very cool. <laughs> He's Vietnamese. Oh yeah, Vietnamese. yep. That's dope. He is, yeah. he is Vietnamese, man. That uh, that's dope that you know that too. So so you know, like you said at the beginning, I've been around for a while. I've seen a lot of guys, and little Dicky slash Dave. He's good. Yeah, he's bro. Talented, genius, funny, nice, you know, silly, right? Yeah, he's a fool, man. He's a great guy, bro. He he taught me a lot about the industry and just as a person, you know, just how to uh, have patience. Mm. You know, you gotta really have patience when you out here chasing your dreams, and I really learned that from him. You know, and can we play put a little bit of his stuff on there so the audience can connect? This is a, a scene from from Dave. Oh wow, this is a powerful scene right here. Oh wow. 
This is tight. Want to sit down and relax for a second? Sit down and relax, bro. I said, what are you doing here? You speak <laughs> English? Yeah. Uh, okay. Get it. Your mom, your mom called me and she told me that she thinks you might be ramping up. I feel like I've had 45 seconds of a window into your bro, life. Bro, I can't use my energy in a positive way. I'm shooting a video with Emma. Emma? I don't see Emma anywhere. Bro, she went to go get a battery. Stop acting like a fucking dickhead. I'm not going to be offended by that mm -hmm. because I feel like this isn't you right now. <laughs> yeah. Who the fuck are you? A life coach? This is me. I'm standing right here, bro. You don't see me. I'm right here. Okay, I'm just saying, like, when you ramp up, you can get a little mean and irrational. Do things like buy a car. So if Mean and irrational? That sounds like you every day. I'm not having a manic episode. You need a polygraph or something? Get the fuck out of here. Okay, so you're not cut, ramping. Cut, cut, cut. This is so, yeah, hey. so, Benji, what do you think? Awesome. It's a great show. Man, yeah, thank cool. you. Great yeah, opportunity. Man. So you, you said this you. is the weed. That's your weed in there? Yeah. Marijuana, yeah, cannabis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you do that scene, are you stoned? Um, Yeah, sometimes, man. Really? I'll be, I'll be, I'll be smoking, man, because I, I need the balance, man. You know, like uh, smoking weed for me like helps with my anxiety. Sometimes I don't really like to indulge with the medicine all the time, even though I practice and take my medicine. But sometimes weed just levels me out where I'm just cool. Cause I can't fucking smoke weed and go on stage, dude, oh, yeah, or man. act at all. No, and I, I feel can you. barely act not on weed. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? No, I feel you, man. But so you really like choke in your in your trailer and you like go because that's some dramatic shit. Yeah, I and need that's that. With a straight face. Yeah, because I need the chemical imbalance. You know, you know, weed uh, might make you a little bit more emotional. Might make you mm. cry. Mm. Might make you think a little bit more. Might make you paranoid for a scene. You don't know how you need to act, but. That we might do something for you that can help you. So me, I just look at it as like a relaxation, a relaxation device, a tool. Yeah. I'm you know? a I'm a big fan and I love the show and I I think like your storyline in particular, like it made me cry and oh, it's it, it meant a lot to. I have a a friend who suffers from bipolar and I know it made him cry too and it was oh, he really connected with you and is it um is it hard to like get into that space and to act in something that that affects you in your in your real life like does it does that get to you sometimes that you have to relive certain moments like that no nah, definitely because you know me and my story uh i'm really bipolar i'm yeah. from south central los angeles uh I do i'm bisexual but that's another <laughs> benji come on dude. i'm trying to bring some fucking comic relief <laughs> no, you're that, a roast writer write right, some roast fine i'm <laughs> depressed and from beverly hills what? <laughs> hey, that was great no i'm sorry go on nah but that's my real story so me growing up in my situation, it's not hard for me to channel mm. those emotions because I went through a lot of trauma growing up, never knew my real mom or real dad. And then I think about all the joy at the same time and, you know, finally being famous and working hard for 18 years and mm -hmm. being in the position that I'm in. So, yeah, that's how I'd be able to tap into those emotions. Just think about my past and think about where I am today and how did, grateful I am. Back when you were younger, did you do some, like, inspic inconspicuous things? Oh, yeah, definitely, Like you did man. some troublemaker type stuff? Yeah, Because I'm definitely. friends with Cam. You know Cam, who works over at, at the mothership? Uh, uh, Tony's... Patterson? Tony, what? Cam Patterson? Yeah, because yeah. yeah. he told Cam, me Cam. some stories about what he used to do, and now he's doing great stuff, which is awesome. Yeah, we all we all do our little things when we growing up trying to find ourselves. I made my fair share of mistakes. Nobody's perfect, but, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did a bunch of stupid, dumbass shit, if mm. that's what you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. Benji, you're going to say something? It seems like you're trying to... No, no. Jockey up. No, I'm good. We're good. You're yeah, just listening. So. Are yeah, you stoned? No, I can perform stoned or drunk. Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. mm, and then, yeah, some people need that uh, substances to perform better. I yeah. respond terribly to food before perform. Like if I have a cheeseburger yeah, and remember. then gotta do something, then I'm fucked. Right, yeah. right, right. I'd rather drink a bunch of whiskey and smoke a bunch of weed and then have to tap dance mm -hmm. than. Um, oh, I want to say burger. congrats to you two on your new project. You know the Richard, oh, the Richard Simmons joint, man. Yes, that's thank dope. You. That's gonna be iconic, man. And I think that they picked and uh, casted the perfect guy. Thank for you, that. thank you. So, so yeah, because uh, I watched that documentary. What think it's called? Where's Richard or something? That shit was crazy. Like, yeah, I just love his personality, man. Anybody that's vivacious in spirit, I just love it. Hey, Gata, yeah, I don't like any actors or comedians smoke weed on my car. Oh, really? You don't I smoke marijuana in my car, so I just weed them out. Oh wow, you weed them out. <laughs> see, she's doing jokes. I like that. So so let's talk about the hype the like hype that. man. The hype hype man stuff. Right. Yeah. So that's a big thing for you. Yeah, definitely, man. So I, tell us about that. I launched my career that way by getting in the game and wiggling up and gandering up and being a hype man for Tiger. You know, I worked with him for a decade and got on tour with Katy Perry, Gym Class Heroes, Fallout wow. Boy, got three songs with Lil Wayne. So me personally, 
I love hyping my friends up, my family. I hype up anybody because it don't even have to do nothing about entertainment. You could be the cameraman. You could be the weed man. I'm going to hype you up to go can, out and get you. Can yours. you hype up my new show format that's starting soon? Let's go. Starting... I need y'all to tap in. Wait, wait I got to tell you what it is first. <laughs> I, I was all, all I need is the, the name. <laughs> okay. It. Speaking it's called PMS. Of, speaking of Tygo, what do you have for lunch? Nah, it's a joke. Oh. <laughs> Date weird stuff. <laughs> that's funny, man. <laughs> So hype up my new show format because right, no, it's no, coming no, no. soon. Tell me it's, about it first. It's called PMS. We're getting this. This doesn't work for me. First of all, you don't put you don't put Weasel behind a desk. I'm not a behind the desk type of guy. You got to get me out on that street. You know, fuck with people. So I'm gonna right. be in the round over in that other room, and we're gonna have a band. And we're gonna have Mervis is gonna be on it. He's a regular. We're gonna have uh, Air, uh, Greg Ag- Agop. He's gonna be the booker. She's gonna be on it, and we're gonna have it's gonna be a party. Wow. This is this is kind of a party. This is like right, we're right. just sitting around. No, nah, this is a great podcast. I like this, man. And matter of fact, I just love the whole compound. This whole place gives me a great it does. vibe, yo. Like, especially when I was in the green room earlier, yeah. I was like, this is an iconic green room. I was like, this shit is doper than some venues I've been to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, vi- the feeling is good in here because it's an artist place. Yeah, I like that, man. You know, yeah. there's no corporate shit here. We're also all locals. We're all L.A. people. Oh, yeah, yeah. me too, man. That's what's so yeah. dope, man. L.A. in the house. Let's go, West Coast. Yeah. Not me. Not him, no. Yeah. Where you so, from, bro? Philly. Oh, yeah, that's what's up, man. What is he like? Pats? Like, yeah. Geno's. Lil, Lil Dicky's a, a hero of ours over there. Yeah, he a legend, man. Yeah. What about this guy right here? He's he's good, too. Benji. Benji's my friend. He's very funny, too. This no, guy no, right no, here. No, 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 no. I know. Y'all, y'all wouldn't even be here if y'all wasn't funny, but... The funniest person in the room is her over there. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> she's the accent. Yeah, she is. She's the she's the accent. I'm so, the real deal. Nah, I'm you the real, real deal, deal for sure. So tell us about that house house party reboot. Oh, house party was dope, man. I got to smoke with a koala. I got to chill with Lena Wave, DC Young Fly, and then it was a LeBron project. And I'm a huge LeBron James fan. So when I found out I was gonna be in that, I was like, that's dope. And then of course just the nostalgia and the history of the movie house party is just dope. Like, yeah, like I could just tell my like I can't wait to sit back when my kid, you know, when I get older and be like, "Yo, look, look at right. all this dope shit I was in." Mm-hmm. That's what I look forward to. Who's it. your kid? You have a kid already? Uh, no, 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 man. When you're about, about to have a kid, about, what you know type what of girls do you like? Um, I like my girl. The what girl? My girl. Oh, who's your girl? <laughs> uh, my girl. She's she's a beautiful lady. What's beautiful her name? Woman. I want to put a shout out to her. Yeah, we're going to shout her out, man. She, What's her yeah, name? She's close by. Her name is Gorgeous Beautiful. Gorgeous Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. GB, what's up, baby? Her, her, bra, name bra. Is, her name is Spicy Senorita. Can I do a little thing for her? Spicy Thanks. Senorita. So what would you call yourself? An actor, a rapper, a hype person? I call myself you- an entertainer. Entertainer. Yeah, because I can do anything. Like I could be at Lollapalooza on the stage rocking out with Rolling Stone on the side of the set. Or I could be performing on Netflix with Lil Dicky at the Kennedy Center, you know, hyping him up. Or I could be, you know, a star in a movie. Like I'd be Or you can that. hype up my new format. Let's go. One Let's more time. go. It's your boy Gator. I need all y'all out there that's watching this to tap in. We got format on the way. PMS show. It's with Pauly Shore. The amazing people that are surrounded by him. It's coming out. You got to stay on the lookout. Make sure y'all get that uh, subscribe button ready. Make sure y'all tap in. Spread the word. That, you heard? Like Pauly like Shore. That. You, I like that. You will always cool. get more from Pauly Shore. There we go. There we See go. See that right there? And so let's talk about lastly where I saw you recently at the Hollywood Bowl. Let's go. Netflix. Snoop Dogg. You got you got um, Post Malone was there. You had uh, Bill Burr was there. Yeah. You had uh, uh, Seth Rogen was there. Damn. You had Little Dicky was there. You had you were there. Yeah, so what was that like being in the Hollywood Bowl? Man, that's that a shit big was, deal. That shit was dope, man. You know, like being from there. LA, it is. Yeah, that's crazy. Being from LA, being able to be at that venue with all those legendary people, it's kind of like just kind of like surreal, man. Mm. Like, it reminds me of Red Rocks, too, in Colorado. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, man. So you've done Red Rocks? Yeah, I've done it all. Madison Square, bro. I've been here. I've been there. State Farm Arena. I'm everywhere. I'm right here with Polly Shore. Let's go. And you know who is he? You know he's, he's really good friends with these people? Who? All these people right here? Really good friends with Andrew Santino. That's my motherfucking... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love Andrew, man. Tell him. I did Whiskey and Ginger, man, early in the game with him when he, you know, was launching off his podcast. And I was just so happy to be on there. This was right before even Dave even came out. And I just couldn't believe it. I'm like, yo, Santino, you had Tony fucking Hawk on your couch. Thank God for putting me on this couch. <laughs> like, I'm a huge skateboard fan, but yeah, uh, I love Santino. He's a great guy. He gave me a lot of good advice on set. He's funny as fuck. Shout out Bobby Lee, too. 
Cool, cool, Bobby cool. Bobby Lee gave me my start in comedy. Really? He took me on the road for the first time and helped me get a job at the comedy store. That's what the fuck I'm talking about, Bobby Lee. Putting people on you a real one, sharing a ladder, bro. Thanks for all that advice you gave me, too, on Sweet Dreams, bro. Bobby keep Lee's hustling. a really good guy. Yeah, keep us. Santino, too. Yeah, Santino yeah. a good guy, man. He always be just giving and, me jibs. And I'm the one that brought Bobby Lee out and on the road. Wow. I'm the one that started the whole thing. Man, hey, what's up? I used to Let touch me get a night of stand-up, bro. I need one night... 30 minutes, I'll write a set. Because I write movies, I write rap songs, I write everything. Well, I'm going to get your digits and we're going to hang out. Let me do a show. We're going bro. to dinner, me, you, and... I just want to do one night, I'll kill that shit. Me, you, <laughs> Beauty Q. Is it Beauty Q, your girl? Uh, Beauty Q, Beauty Q. I no, you know. said your girl was named Beauty Oh, Q. oh yeah, Spicy Senorita. Yeah, Spicy yeah, yeah, Senorita. Yeah, yeah, All right. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to bring up the band right now. We're going to bring up the band. They're going to come in here and then we're going to do some music. Let's but I want to hear you hype them up. You know Billy, Billy, Billy yeah. Joe... Billy J, the 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 lead singer, excuse me, the band, uh, the band, uh, fuck, Green, Green Day. Day, Green Day, the band Green Day. Yeah. You know the band Green Day? Of course. Tell they me. It was s- just on tour with um. I mean, they just did a show with Gym Class Heroes. I think it was a. Uh, well, the son, the the kid that show. you know, the kid that's in this band, it's the son of the lead singer of Green Day. Oh, that's dope as fuck, man. There so, you go. Oh yeah, we going viral today. It's, yeah. going, it's going up. We going. This digital. is cool. Your dad's in the band Offspring, right? Offspring. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, no, he's in Green Day. Oh shit! I fucked up his intro already. No, I know. <laughs> I'm just yeah. kidding. No, Offspring, Green Day, great bands. No, Bill, Billy, Billy, I would always see at the comedy store. Mm-hmm. He was always over there. Nice to see you. Nice to see Look you too. Your, you. your friends there. Tell me your yeah. name again. Enzo. Enzo, yeah, yeah. Enzo. That's a very Jacob. car, too. Jacob. Enzo. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob. Yeah. Lean in, you guys. Get into the group. You I'm guys, in here. We're Enzo, leaning in. lean in a little. Yeah, there you I, go. I got But no, his heart. I want to put his heart into it. The heart. There you it's, go. We're the there. Heart. Get down there. We're there. Yeah. yeah. I told my dad we were coming on, and he was. He said that you're a very nice person. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Thank he you. Was, he thank was you. very happy that I was coming. Thank you. Yeah, he, he was always, I always see him, hug, happy for him. I've known him from back in the day, back in the MTV days. We started together. Uh, the, the 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 kid the the son of the lead singer of Sublime was here too, you know oh, the band whoa. Sublime. Yeah, yeah. His so, name's Jacob too. Yeah, and we both spell here. it with a K. Yeah. So say what's up. He's watching too. Oh. Hey, Jacob. Other Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> so I was I was I grew up around the comedy store since I was little. So my my family started it. So I was known as Mitzi Short's son, right? Mitzi Short's son, Sammy Short's son. So you're known as Billy's. Son. Yes. <laughs> so what's that like? Because um, people find out. And I yeah. was hanging out with Dave Chappelle's son, Suna. Yeah. Successful people fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got it. He, you guys, you guys, and I had it. He asked me, because it, it's hard because you're following in the footsteps of legends. Yeah. You're following in the footsteps of your dad. He's yeah. following the footsteps of uh, uh, Dave Chappelle. Dave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'm my my dad worked at the post office. I kind of can't fail. <laughs> like the bar is not set that high. I would imagine that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's tough. You know, mm-hmm. um, like I didn't necessarily want to play music growing up. Funnily enough, you know, um, I just kind of happened into it with some friends I grew up with, and um, and yeah, you know, when, when I was younger, I definitely felt like this was kind of an impossible task. You know, um, mm-hmm. but I mean, I've been doing it now for like ten. 11 years Amazing. and so at this point i'm just like you know it is what it is people will have their opinions you know and stuff but you know i'm, I'm just trying to keep playing for does as long it as does I can. it make you work harder yeah knowing or, that you're the son of i think definitely when i was like a teenager mm. i was very like you know i, I have i'll to show be you right, so to the people, good at yeah. this and i just realized kind of you know I'm never going to be <laughs> that good at it you know but i just i do it because my parents support me with it and and i do play with my friends and you know, just love playing shows and touring. Yeah, so, that's know. what it's about. At the end of the day, you got to love it. Yeah. It gets you out of bed. All the stuff we do, you guys, gets us out of bed. Mm-hmm. That's the main thing. That's why you do your podcast. That's why you write your jokes. You do your, your hype man stuff. You, you know, masturbate. And, uh, <laughs> and then you... <laughs> Hello, Polly, my old friend. I think so. So where did you come... How was it called? Why is it called Ultra Q? Oh yeah, um, when I was a kid, I really loved uh, Ultraman, the show, mm. um, and Ultra Q is a TV show from the '60s, and it seemed like a good name to choose. Gator, what uh, do you think? Give him some, give him some hype man shit. Here he is, <laughs> Ultra Q, coming out on the big stage. 
Put up, put up, go. I just want to say, man, keep doing what y'all doing. Y'all going to have a lot of pressure. Y'all attached to successful people already. Mm. So people going to be judging all out the gate. But also just don't take advantage of the position you in. Take the fact that you got the resources and a lot of information that a lot of people don't got. Don't got and just Because you had, you had Luther Vandross as your father, right? No, no, no. I had Michael oh. Jordan and Master <laughs> Splinter. And I had <laughs> Homer Simpson and shit like that. But, yeah, I, I just uh, – like the fact that y'all got the opportunity to do something legendary and be heard, bro. That's all it's about. So salute to y'all, man. Keep killing that shit, Ultra Q. And yeah, and don't let the haters, you know, because it's like yeah. some people's parents are losers. Yeah. It's not your fault, like your parents are winners. <laughs> your new album, Empty Eddie. Uh, yeah. So tell yeah. us about that. It's an album. Because you've been doing it 10 years, so how many yeah. albums? Uh, Three. Three or four? Three or yeah. four, a couple EPs. Something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's another, it's another record. Mm. I mean, we've been playing. I I met him when I was like in fourth grade, mm. um, and yeah, it's just we put it out like two months ago, and we're just playing shows. All right, so we're gonna go in the other room right now, and we're gonna listen to some Ultra Q. So we're gonna check that out. Let's go over there. Boom, boom, boom. Here we go. Cut, 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 cut. Hype man, please, please, please. We get them with hype man. They're ultra Q from Oakland. Let me hear you hype them up to intro them right here. Right here. Yo, 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 what's up? What's the fucking deal with your boy Gator? What's really real? We out here right now. We live with Ultra Q. Let's get it. 